Hey folks, I want to discuss a ring, which is the collection of all functions from the reals to the reals. So let me talk about um, why this forms a ring. So you should have functions in mind that map from the reals to the reals. So, so, so maybe your function is just x squared. f of x is equal to x squared. Or maybe your function is, you know, f of x is equal to cosine of x. All right. Or maybe your function is f of x is equal to x plus 3. Okay. So you should think of these functions as, you know, as, as these graphs. Um, the functions I've drawn have all happen to be continuous, but you could think of functions that are not continuous. So your function could be, you know, a step function, which is negative one for a while, and then it's um, equal to one for a while. Yeah. Certainly your function um, doesn't need to be, it's not continuous, so it doesn't need to be differentiable. Your function could be this absolute value function. Um, but yeah, you're, Function could be quite wild and, and map all over the place. Okay, so these are elements of my ring. I've drawn five different elements of my ring here. In a ring, I need to be able to add things. So what is f plus g? Well, f plus g is a function. So I need to tell you what f plus g does to an input x. This is just equal to f of x plus g of x. But, but visually, you should think of these as adding two functions to each other, you know, using the pictures. So, um, you know, let's call this function um, f and call this function g. When I add them, um, I'm adding them pointwise and I get this function f plus g, which, you know, that's a poor drawing, but it's sort of like stacking the two functions on top of each other. So in purple, this will be my drawing of f plus g. Um, or maybe let's call this function h and this function k. Now when I add them, I'm going to add them pointwise. So on the right part, um, I'm, k is getting larger by 1. Whereas on the left part, k is getting smaller by one. So in purple now, I've drawn h plus k. All right. Addition is commutative. Every function has an inverse. So the inverse of this function, the additive inverse is that function. I should say the additive identity is the zero function, which is just flat. Um, so to get an inverse of a function, you just reflect it. You also have um, multiplication of functions. So this is not composition, okay? Multiplication of functions is, pointwise multiplication is quite different than composition. So the pointwise multiplication of two functions acts on an input by just taking f of that input and multiplying it by g of that input. So why don't I try multiplying h and k? All right, so h times k, when I'm on the right half, I'm multiplying k by positive one, so I just should stay the same. But when I multiply by, um, when I'm on the left half, I'm multiplying whatever k is by negative one, so it should reflect on the left half, all right? So this is gonna be h times k. Go. Now I don't necessarily have multiplicative inverses, 
I do have a multiplicative identity, which is just this function that's always one. Because if I take any function and point-wise multiply it by this function that's always one, I don't, I don't change anything. But even though I have a multiplicative identity, I don't have multiplicative inverses. Um, just because if, if your function has a zero, then it has no multiplicative inverse. Um, you know, there's no number I can multiply zero by to get one. If your function doesn't have a zero, then you can take one over it to get a multiplicative inverse. So let's write this down. If f of x is not equal to zero for all x, which are inputs, then one over f defined by, you know, one over f of some input is just one over f of x is its inverse. Um, okay, so here, um, let's see. Let me draw a picture of this. Let's say I look at this function x squared plus one, its inverse is going to be one over x squared plus one, which is gonna look something like this. Asymptoted, asymptoting to zero. Okay. I, don't, I don't mean for these curves to be super accurate, but um, where the blue function is one, its inverse purple function also has to be one so that I get one times one is one. And then as the blue function goes off to infinity, the purple function has to go down to infinity. Yeah. And, and when I multiply them, you know, when I multiply them, I get, you know, the blue value times the purple value gives me one, this identity function one that takes any input and maps it to one. All right. It's a little bit of an introduction to how functions form a ring. And this is pointing to you why we really care about rings. I mean, it, it feels like we're in an, in an analysis class right now. We talk about functions, but you have rings of functions. And so um, it happens all the times that you might invent rings because you're thinking about the discrete objects like groups, uh, as we've discussed in this class. But things that you prove about rings are of course also true for rings of functions. And so algebra has a ton to say about other areas of mathematics, including things like analysis. Any public questions? Thanks so much.